Good morning, I am Julia Miller. I'm the director and I'm the founder of Citywide Singles. I wanna invite you to join me this morning for tea time and prayer as I bring the word of God to you from Proverbs 18. We've been in a series of looking at a different chapter of Proverbs every day of the month. So today is July 18th, so we're gonna look at Proverbs 18. And I don't know what jumped out at you, but I, I just, I didn't even know really until this morning what I was gonna be talking about. But as I sat down and I started praying and asking God what it was that he wanted to, what he wanted to talk about, he really impressed upon me this verse that says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. This is on the Citywide Singles DFW Facebook page um, in case you wanna take a look at it. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Now that doesn't sound like anything that really jumps off the page compared to some of the other verses that are in this chapter. I mean, it's a great chapter, has some great verses in it. Um, things that I've stood on before, you know, the, the gift opens the way for the giver and ushers them into the presence of the great. That's one of my favorite scriptures from that chapter. But I really felt like God was highlighting this. And as I sat down to pray about it, um, I was just reminded of, uh, of running to him, running running towards the Lord and what that looked like. And so I wanna talk about that for just a minute because in the coming months, mm -hmm. there are going to be some things that we're going to see that are going to shake us, that are gonna make us feel rattled. And next month, I have pretty much determined that I'm gonna go through uh, verse by verse on, pro on Psalms 91. Psalms 91 is the protection scripture that, that talks about um, about hiding ourselves in the shadow of his wing and how to find refuge in God. And this is a pivotal time in the history of our nation and there's just a lot of volatility uh, politically and, and otherwise. And I think it's that we're feeling, um, as I sat down and I was praying about this, and what I wanna show you is just how I do this, but uh, as I sat down and I, I just wanted to pray and just say, God, you know, what do you wanna talk about? I literally get out a prayer journal and I put on some praise and worship music and I just say, God, and as I write out the words, God, what do you wanna to talk to me about this morning? As I'm writing that out, usually I'll start to hear, I'll start to hear something from the Lord. Usually it's either a picture or a word or maybe a scriptural reference, something, and you know, the only thing that was coming to mind was kind of a picture of a butterfly that was trying to break out of a cocoon and I was hearing the word metamorphosis, like we're going through birth pains, that something is happening and, and the Lord said, I'm doing a new thing, do you not perceive it? And I was like, wow, okay. And then this, this verse that um, in Proverbs 18 jumped off the page at me, the name of the Lord is a strong tower the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. And I just thought about all the times that I would run into the presence of God. When everything was going crazy, there's been times I've been serving uh, at a particular church and then all of a sudden people got upset about things and, and were offended about things. Some things didn't even make sense to me. And I said, you know what, I, I, I don't know, I, I don't know. All I know is I'm gonna go back to my little prayer corner here, my, my, little, uh, my little secret place, and, and, and I'm gonna sit down and if you guys need me, just come get me. And I wanna talk about what that looks like because that's really the, the, the abundance of, of how I'm able to teach what I teach is really it comes out of that secret place. Um, Psalms 91 says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And so what does this look like to dwell in, in the shelter of the Most High, to rest in the shadow of the Almighty? What does that look like exactly? I wanna tell you about a friend of mine named Catherine. Catherine is uh, this beautiful African-American woman that I met through um, a prayer group. And it wasn't just any prayer group, this was, um, a, a group of ladies, a small group of ladies that we had been handpicked. I don't even know how I got picked for this, but um, it was when they were building the Gateway South Lake campus over off of 114. It was just a piece of land and they had a construction crew out there and they had a construction um, mobile home type thing out there. And uh, a lady who was uh, in leadership, had, had come into leadership position, said we, 
Uh, she handpicked certain ladies to be part of this prayer team to pray over the land. Somehow I was, I was asked to do that. I thought, wow, this is a privilege, okay. And this was probably about 10 years ago. And so every Saturday morning, me and about 10 other ladies would meet in this trailer, this construction trailer, and we would pray over the land, pray over the construction of that, uh, that facility being built. And as we're sitting there, I mean, it just you could just feel the power of God just rattling in this place. And I thought, wow, like how did I get here? Like how did, how did I get chosen to do this? And one of the ladies that was there was Catherine. I didn't know Catherine at the time. Uh, come to find out she was also uh, a realtor. And so I, I just made an effort to reach out to her because when I looked at her, I could, I could sense the reverence of God coming off of her. I can't describe it, it just was a, it was just a presence of God about her. You just had an automatic respect for her because uh, you could feel and sense the presence of God all over her. And I thought, I wanna to get to know this lady. I don't know what's going on, but I, I wanna to get to know her. And so I, I sort of used the excuse of both of us being in real estate as a reason to you know, sit down and talk. But as we got to know each other and she started inviting me over, inviting me into, into her home, and it turned out she was in a transition in her life and so she was living in an apartment. She had moved into a three bedroom apartment. It was just her and her husband and I thought, why do you guys have a three bedroom apartment? Well, one of those rooms, she said, was her prayer room. One was an office, the other one was a, a, a prayer room. And she said, I just take one day out a week just to sit in the presence of God. And I thought, wow. Like that's really hard to do when you're in real estate and your phone's always going off. And she said, no, and I think for her it was Thursday. And I was like, really? Because I wanted to know, I wanted to know what it was that caused her to have this, this, this reverence of God all over her. It was an invisible force, but it, you could just sense it and you could see it. And so as we started praying together, like I said, I started getting to know Catherine better. And as I got to know her better, I started to understand her faith walk better. But what I found to be the clue or the key was that she carved out a particular day just to honor God and say, you know what, I'm, all I'm doing is just going before God and saying, you know what, I don't, I don't, have, any, I don't have any agenda here, God. I am just here to be here with you. And this just so impressed me that I started trying to do this. Now, I'm not going to say it's easy because you've got a lot of things competing for your attention. But when I chose to say, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna have a day, just a day, that it's just me and God. And to me, this was easy, easier to do when I lived in an apartment because it was just a tiny little place and I had like a tiny little stool that I would sit on and I would just take a day off, I would sleep in, I'd roll out of bed and I'd have, I'd have my, my Bible sitting out on, uh, on the uh, coffee table next to this little stool that wasn't necessarily comfortable because I didn't want to fall asleep. Sometimes when you're doing this you get really relaxed and I had my prayer journal and then I had some blank note cards, you know, some markers, pens, whatever and you know, and you know, something to drink. And I would just sit there and I'd, I'd roll out of bed and I'd say, you know, God, I, I love you. And this is, I have no place I need to go. There's no, nothing I need to do, no place I need to go. I'm just here, I wanna be in your presence. And I would just rest. I would make a choice to rest in his presence and just wait on him. Basically, I was waiting to see what the Spirit of God would, would say. And I would invite, God, you are, I invite you into this time. I invite you into this place. I invite you, God, I, I need you. I invite your presence. And as you invite the presence of God, the, the, the Spirit of God will meet you in that place. And so I wanna point out a, a scripture in Isaiah 40 that says, they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. This is that scripture about mounting up with wings as eagles that we would run and not grow weary. We would walk and not be faint. Okay, so there is a renewed strength that comes out of this. And a lot of times, you know, my mind would compete and so I'd have like a little notepad, a um, little sticky pad that if like something came to mind that said, oh, you know what, you need to go pick up your uh, dry cleaning or something that I would know to jot that down because I don't want that to distract my mind I'll even pray God quiet my mind quiet my soul God I just want to be here with you and some days it's easier than others you know there's some days that you just have a hard time settling down but when you have praise and worship music on it just ushers in the presence of God you know um, <clears throat> there's a scripture that says that um, this uh, the, the, the Spirit of the Lord encompasses 
the praises of his people. So we know that as we praise him, as we thank him, as we grow quiet before him, that it ushers in his presence. Uh, Lamentations has a scripture in, in chapter 3 that says, The Lord is good to those who wait on him. The Lord is good to those who wait on him. And there's lots of scriptures about waiting on the Lord. You know, you can just, you can Google it, stick it in the Bible app, but to the soul that seeks him. So when we seek him, we're honoring him. We're saying, God, I'm making time. You know, the only things that we really have is, is our... <laughs> my dog is howling. Uh, the only thing we have is our, our time. So what I want to point out to us is just to make it a goal, to make it our goal to strive to enter into his rest. Um, as we enter into his rest and we usher in his presence, we'll start to get um, just bits and pieces of what God wants to say and just jot those things down. It may not make sense at the time, but then as, as you have that jotted down, you can pray over it and say, God, what is it that you're trying to say to me through this scripture? What is it that you're trying to say about these words that you're giving me? God, what is it that you're laying on my heart? And you'll be surprised what springs up out of it, but it, it's a way of, of of feeding your spirit man because your spirit man has a long a longing to commune with the spirit of god this is our tie to god and this is how we end up with a renewed sense of strength our body our mind everything can go harder and faster and longer when we have a renewed spirit so i want to encourage you just to sit in the presence of god and allow this the presence of god just to permeate you and to minister to you because God is loving and he's got a lot to say. It may not seem like it, but sometimes we just have to get quiet and just rest in him and know that he's going to meet us in that place. So I'm going to pray for you and then I want to release you to have a great weekend and know that, um, know that he loves you so much. Father God, we thank you and we praise you, Father God, that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. God, I thank you for this day of rest, this time and season of rest. God, I pray that we would take advantage of this time and usher in your presence and rest in you and cause you to, um, to refuel us, to re refill us, to um, re-energize us, to give us new strength, Father God. God, I pray that we would mount up with wings as eagles, that we would be able to run the race that you've set before us and that we wouldn't grow weary, Father God. God, your word says, do not grow weary in well-doing for a proper time that we would reap a harvest. So God, we thank you and we praise you right now in Jesus' name that you are good all the time. And God, I thank you for a renewed sense of strength, a renewed sense of our, our connection to you, Father God, a renewed, uh, revived relationship with you, Father God. God, we worship you, we praise you, we glorify you, and we call you holy. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every person here today. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that you are blessed today. Know that I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. He's got a good and awesome plan for you. Plans to prosper you and to, to bless you, to bring you into the fullness of everything that he has for you. Just turn to him and know that he is God and that, that you are his child. And it's his joy to, to, to love you and, and to, to, to pull you in close to him and to nurture you. I pray that you have a great Saturday. I love you.